became aware that there was um, a lump that I could just about see when I looked in the mirror. Sweating was probably the main thing. I'd suddenly sweat for no reason at all. But it was the headaches that were my main symptom. When I first noticed any kind of symptoms, I didn't actually feel ill, but I became aware that there was um, a lump that I could just about see when I looked in the mirror. And I, I kind of ignored it after that. In the December, just before Christmas of 2016, I felt this lump again and I suddenly became aware that, Do you know what, this has been there for some time now and nothing's developed. So I, at that point, I thought, I'll go and visit the GP and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go and see what they have to say. I went in and explained I'd had this lump that I'd noticed since probably October of the previous year. And he, without making any sort of move to examine the lump, he just said, oh, it, it's an enlarged lymph gland, it'll be fine. But... I had this nagging, nagging doubt in my mind and I'm a quite a tenacious person so I knew that if, um, if it wasn't right, if I didn't feel it was right, then I knew that I would, you know, have to push. I was on the case now, I, I was on a bit of a roll. I needed to get this sorted. Um, so I went for the ultrasound scan um, and then heard nothing and by the end of September I decided I think I got a nagging doubt in my mind I just wanted to know what this what this was I rang the GP practice but this time I spoke to the senior GP partner he said to me well have you not heard off the hospital because they've recalled you and they want to do a needle aspiration that it's not an enlarged lymph node this actually could be cancer and I was really fortunate that I had an excellent consultant radiographer who was going to do the needle aspiration. And he recognised how vascular this tumour was that was actually growing on the carotid artery. And he explained to me, can't do the needle aspiration, very dangerous um, because this is a very vascular tumour. I think, I'm 98% sure that this is called a paraganglioma. And that is the first time I'd ever heard the term paraganglioma. My symptoms probably started around probably, I'd say a decade ago at least. Sweating was probably the main thing. I'd suddenly sweat for no reason at all. Uh, got to a stage over a number of years where I, I'd have towels dotted around the house and I'd just sweat profusely. I was worried about the symptoms, but I think, if I'm honest, it's easier perhaps to push them to the back of your mind. I was perhaps looking for alternative reasons that it may be. I was thinking perhaps I've got a thyroid problem. I was thinking it was just because I was moving into middle age, perhaps. Possibly afraid of what might actually be going on. Um, but I'll be honest, I, I avoided it for a long time. and I avoided facing up to what was going on for, for quite a long time. Well, I was at work, my, my primary job is education and training for the ambulance service. And I, I was doing a teaching session one morning and I started the session, didn't feel quite myself, felt, felt, felt unwell. 
Um, and then felt acutely unwell whilst I was in the middle of teaching. Made my exit from the room, one of my colleagues took over, went, popped myself on a cardiac monitor, checked and noticed that I was in an arrhythmia. I was, I was in an arrhythmia called fast atrial fibrillation. So I got a heart rate of about 180. Um, I felt quite unwell at that point. Um, spoke to one of my colleagues and was taken down to the local A&E for assessment. Um, at that point then I was simply put on a pathway given drugs to deal with that at the time. I was cardioverted at hospital on a couple of occasions, um, in other words given electric shock to put me back into a normal rhythm. Also had a cardiac MRI as a result or, or at least in preparation for the treatment to deal with the, the arrhythmia and I was told that they discovered a large soft tissue mass just above my heart. The object or the soft tissue mass I'd found above my heart was actually a paraganglioma. I first um, had symptoms about two years before my diagnosis and the symptoms that I was observing was a really persistent headache. I had a headache every day, sometimes all day. On retrospects, I had more symptoms than I really realised. Um, I had my voice had grown a bit raspy. I also had a protruding tonsil slightly on one side. Not really any pain, um, but it was the headaches that were my main symptom. It was very frustrating. I just really felt like there was something more going on. Um, and I just wasn't happy to accept um, that it was just a tension headache. It was getting to a point where um, I was starting to look for headache specialists. I was desperate to see somebody who could look into other things for me. I've been seeing a chiropractor, osteopath to, to see if there was anything in my neck. Um, and my GP had actually given me a re-referral back to ENT. My tonsil had started protruding a little. And whilst they said that that had been perfectly normal previously, I think my GP just thought it was worth another look with an ENT. So I had an MRI there which identified um, a chicken egg sized tumour in my neck, um, in my head and neck. So at that point um, we knew why I had a headache and uh, at that point I had my diagnosis. If I've got any advice to anybody embarking on this journey, I'd say don't be afraid, do your research, push for information, push your GP, get them to help you find information out because that is essentially what they should be there for. Um, so don't let it fester, don't, don't let it eat, eat away at you. It's, it's not a nightmare, it's something that, you know, it, you can handle, so you know, don't ever sit in the dark. I think it's too easy to look perhaps at me at that stage, and again, too easy to pigeonhole somebody. And I accept and I understand the, 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 the condition itself is very, very rare. And I may be the only person perhaps in 10 years it's walked into that surgery with that condition. Um, however, it, the list of symptoms that I had almost read like a tick list for the condition. You could almost look up symptoms for this and tick every single one off and, and I had virtually all of them. It was about two years that it took to get me diagnosed and I just felt a burden on my GP on, on these appointments. Um, I felt frustrated sometimes, I'd be so tired um, and only retrospectively did I realise that that was probably associated. One of the issues that I had was that um, symptoms didn't seem to be connected and very much the consultants that I saw kept within their own field. But I think sometimes it's good to take a step back and, and look at the bigger picture and uh, no one expects a medical professional to know everything about everything but um, learn from experience and 
uh, to keep learning. <laughs>